So, Steve, you're a comedian and an actor and you're famous for the 40-year-old virgin, is that right? <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Comedian without question. I'm a funny Englishman. <laughs> so, I always wonder whether you get um, mistaken for Steve Carell. Um, oh, I got introduced once at a conference oh, uh, as the very famous Steve Carell, but of course it's spelt differently. So, mine's C-A-R-R-O-L-L, originates from Ireland. Oh, interesting. I've been dying to say that to you for a year. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Favourite social media platform and why? Um, I, I enjoy all of them, to be honest with you. Um, I, I probably post more content on LinkedIn. I think a lot more about the content that I put on LinkedIn because without question, it's a professional site. Instagram, I like Instagram because you get a photograph and it's really quick and easy. Uh, Facebook, I tend to keep more for... Uh, friends and family back home. So I like all three of them. Um, I'd probably put more energy into LinkedIn. Right, and that's your, because I noticed that as well, because that's like your voice. LinkedIn is like where you're really pushing what you're doing and what you're involved in. So it's interesting, yeah, that you're using them all for different purposes. Well, it's the one thing that, you know, one thing that we talk about a lot, and that's the importance for real estate agents to understand that each of those platforms has a, a, a part to play. And uh, you know, often agents get it wrong and they, they, they copy and paste content from one platform to another and, and that's not the way to do it. You know, you've got to really think about the recipient of the information that you're sending out. So on LinkedIn, um, people who uh, connect with me are expecting to be educated, informed. They, they, they want to learn stuff from me. So obviously, you know, I think about that. I think with Instagram, it's just a bit of a funny, this is where, I, so, so thinking about the platforms really, really important. And obviously if I preach that, I, I need to try and practice it. Yeah, and interestingly, so LinkedIn, their biggest um, kind of users from an advertiser's perspective is the universities yes. and education um, businesses and like the MBAs and things yeah. like that. And they also have lynda.com, which yeah. they own. And it's all Microsoft owned these days. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so they really are, it's about peer-to-peer -peer education. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, I mean, I, I, I've built up a lot of relationships, um, business relationships, connections via LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, a lot of people reach out to me and say, look, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And often I'll take those conversations offline. And that can be a bit, that can be a bit uh, time, I mean, for example, yesterday I had somebody from Link on LinkedIn who asked me what they would do to build a prominent digital footprint. Now, I just sent him my number and said, hey, look, just give me a call. And we had a really good conversation. Now, that probably took 15 minutes of my time, but I do believe that if you want to play in that LinkedIn space and you want to position yourself as, an, as, as a thought leader or as an ambassador, you've got to be prepared to help people who reach out to you. So, um, and I think that LinkedIn is the platform that helps you build a reputation without question. And so many real estate agents do it so badly. I mean, I'm shocked at the number of real estate agents that are not even on LinkedIn. Mm. Yeah, absolutely shocked. There's definitely uh, a lot more than they were a couple of years ago. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, I think there's, there's, there, there's an increase in number, but everybody's on Facebook, everybody's on Instagram. Most real estate agents don't particularly make the most of Instagram and Facebook, but LinkedIn, uh, most people are not on LinkedIn, yeah? The, those that are, like, you know, I mean, we just heard Matt LaHood talk. I mean, Matt LaHood is good at using LinkedIn, yeah. but it's definitely a tool that can help you build business and build followers. Yeah, so I work with commercial clients and it's perfect for them. So they, that's Absolutely. The, the space that they play in. But when I see the resi guys, like you were saying, like the ones that are there and have like, you know, migrated over yeah. so that they're playing in Facebook world and LinkedIn, they're actually um, still doing the same content. So they're posting, yeah, the signboard with the sticker. Oh, I hate and, that. and it's it's like, oh, they're posting, you know, a long list of their opens where when yeah. you're trying to read it on mobile, you have to yeah. squint to look in. So it's, yeah, they've got a, it's got to be educational content, which um, like you're spot on. Yeah, no, and I, look, I think the, the other great thing about LinkedIn is you can build international connections. So, I mean, I've built international connections from Europe, from Scandinavia, from the United States through my LinkedIn content and the world's a small place is definitely the way to go yeah and in certain parts you know of Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane there's international buyers right Correct. so it's a, you know or WeChat is another way to reach international yeah. buyers so yeah. we've got to think unilaterally yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. okay most fun digital tool that you use in your everyday life uh, it would be Facebook 
Yeah, I mean, I know that's not, if you class Facebook as a tool. I mean, I think, I think Facebook is probably the, 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 the tool that makes me smile the most during a day. The places that I spend most time on uh, would be the BBC website. Mm -hmm. So I love the BBC website for news because I think it's authentic and it's real. That's yeah. just my view. It's such a pom. Lo lo yeah, <laughs> lots of people will disagree. But the BBC, yeah. LinkedIn, Facebook and, and Instagram. But the, the site, that the, the platform that gives me the biggest smile regularly would, 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 would be Facebook. If I Googled you, would I find any dirt? I don't think so. I think you would have found a lot of dirt uh, if Facebook had been invented earlier, okay. because certainly during the during my twenties, uh, when I was playing a lot of rugby, there was some amazing things or antics that uh, we would get up to. But they were the days before mobile phones and so on and so forth. So, yeah. so thankfully, uh, I mean, I pity people growing up uh, yes. in, in, who are in their sort of teens and twenties now because there is no hiding place. Yeah. But I got all of that sort of immaturity and. Uh, and, and, and drinking games uh, out of the system before technology really took a, took a hold. So, but I think you'd struggle today. I'm in the same boat as you. Mine's all on celluloid, and it's yeah. <laughs> you know, in old packs. But I tell you what is interesting. Just like, it's a real, it's a real serious point, and that is, more and more employers are checking out potential employees. Uh, on social media and they're doing a check before they actually offer them a job mm -hmm. and it's the one thing that you know I tell my uh, teenage children you've got to be really uh, conscious of what you post what you like and so on and so forth because uh, at some point you're going to apply for a job and the, the, the more switched on employers are now doing a social media check to see whether or not you've got any particular uh, views or political biases that may or may not be uh, good or bad for their, their working culture. So I think that digital footprint is, is, is absolutely massive and I think there's a real big opportunity for somebody to, to work with um, you know, secondary school kids who are four, 13, 14 and 15 and, and try and get them to understand you know, what they're posting uh, is forever. It's a bit like a tattoo. If you put a tattoo on your neck, that tattoo is there forever and a day. Yeah. If you say something online that is controversial, mm -hmm. that is there forever. Yeah. It's a very, very important point. Yeah, what goes on social stays on stays social. On, st what stays goes, on social, yeah. Goes on the internet, stays on the internet. Yeah. It's so very true and it's very hard. I get, interestingly, after I've spoken on stage, um, at various conferences, I then usually have somebody hanging by the doorway. Yeah. You know, so I get a queue of people come to ask questions afterwards, and then as I exit the room, um, there's usually somebody there that says, "Hey, Mel, um, I just want to ask you. I've got a friend who has something on the internet that they yes. don't want to, and it keeps coming up on page one. So, yeah, yeah like there's even, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm the same as you, and thankfully." I, um, I, didn't, I didn't live through the era of where everything was yeah. on the internet. Well, I think, you know, I think that's a really interesting point that you make because ratings and reviews are going to be a really significant part uh, of all business. So you think, you think about all the opportunities that you have now to check out you know, a, an Uber driver bef before you decide to actually make that booking, check out a hotel through TripAdvisor. And, you know, we, 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 you're familiar with Glassdoor, and Glassdoor is an app that, that, that enables uh, former employees and current employees to rate their boss and rate their company, their culture, their pay structure, the good things and the bad things. And, you know, whether or not we like it or not, that's going to be a big part of the, the way that we work as we move into the next decade. And I think one of the skills that we all have to uh, get our heads around is when somebody says something negative about us online, that will be there forever. How do we actually deal with it? Yeah. And uh, we haven't got time to go through that now, but I mean, obviously an option is to ignore, an option is to, is to constructively answer. What, what agents and business people shouldn't do is, is get all fired up and start a rant online because again, that's going to be there permanently and in the long run won't look good for you. Yeah. And you're right. And the, it's the property managers that, that 
that have the um, that struggle in this area more so than the sales agents because the sales agents it's relatively easy to keep that squeaky keen. The property management team, like I as a investor, as a landlord, I look up the tenants. So when we have an application, because I'm a digital person, I go straight onto um, social media, onto Google and I try and get an idea of who that person is. Um, so I stalk my, my tenants before yeah, they move in. Absolutely. And then, um, but tenants, when they have their gripes, they head to, if they can't get it resolved with the property manager or they're un, you know, unhappy with something that the landlord hasn't done yeah. for them, then they'll head straight to social media and they'll leave lots of bad reviews. So yeah. it's the property management team that have to deal with yeah. um, you know, this issue. And it's a good point. And look, one of, one of the things that we're working on together is the Digital Live program. And one of the work, one of the breakout sessions that we'll run is how do you actually deal with bad or negative reviews yeah. and they, they are topics that you know we, we have to uh, address because they are very very relevant topics and look I was one of the great pieces of advice I was get once given and it, and it sticks with me is the word intention so our intention is or our intention was and I think that if you're dealing with something really negative our intention is firm but it's also polite mm -hmm. yeah and it's a really really good uh, English uh, really good really good one word from the English language that's uh, worth keeping at the back of your mind very good